She was a teacher for years. She then became president of the United Teachers of Dade, and now she's the Democratic nominee for lieutenant governor of Florida. I went one-on-one -on -one with Carla Hernandez to talk about why she decided to get into politics and her priorities if she makes it to Tallahassee. Carla, thank you so much for joining us here on Impact. I'm super excited to be here, Jackie. Well, you're a mom, teacher, union president, but you haven't held a political office and you have no legislative experience. So why are you jumping into this political arena, which is in a big way? Why did you decide to take that plunge now? So it's a great question. And I, I get asked this question a lot of times. And I tell sure. folks that our classrooms are a microcosm of our community. And so when our kids are having an issue and we hear about it in the classroom because their parents are getting evicted or they can't afford to have health care and they don't have access to health care, these are all things that we know um, impact students and impact our classrooms and, of course, are impacting their parents as well. And, you know, obviously our kids, whether they're uh, the child of a plumber or a lawyer or a banker or, you know, a nurse, they're all sitting in the classroom together. So what people don't understand is that as the president of the teachers union, uh, we're the fourth largest in the entire country. Mm -hmm. I'm the CEO of a small business. I have 42 employees and we lobby in Tallahassee. We go to Tallahassee every single year to talk to legislators from both sides of the aisle to talk about issues that are important in our community. And throughout that work and lobbying and speaking to folks, I've met a lot of grassroots organizations as well and leaders in our community that have been fighting for other things that I think are really integral to just the well-being of our communities. And so I'm passionate about people, about helping folks. Um, my dad was a union worker, an immigrant. I believe in the middle class. And of course, I'm a teacher and I care about our kids, their future education, and making sure that we all prosper at the same time. So you served as a United Teachers of Dade president, as you just mentioned. I think it was since 2016, is that correct? Yeah, I've been doing this for seven years now. And you've had to deal with teacher shortages, the elimination of salary steps for veteran teachers, working on increasing teacher salaries through referendum, the COVID pandemic, but also dealing with some teachers, one in particular that is facing jail time for a relationship uh, with a minor. As union president, what has been the most challenging? The lack of... Uh, just resources that our school systems get for so many years. Um, you know, I know there's an ad out there that says that uh, the governor has done so much for education, and we know that that's actually absolutely wrong. It's 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 not factual. Uh, for so many years, we've been underfunded. Um, our our teachers are 48th in the country in terms of what we pay them. And that's why so many uh, counties, including Miami-Dade, have had to put referendums up on the ballot to ensure that not only are we recruiting and retaining our teachers, but that we're actually, um, that we have access to the resources that we need so that our teachers can continue to do the work that they do and that we have the security that we need in our classrooms as well. So, you know, these are all things that have been a struggle for many years. Um, I tell, I try to remind people as well that when Charlie Chris was governor, um, we were 35th in how we pay teachers. Think about that, 35th and now we're 48th. We're struggling in many ways. The pandemic has not been helpful. It's been hurtful. And now is the time to invest and put more resources in the classroom, not defund public education, which is why we want to make sure that education is a top priority for this administration. Something that really hurt veteran teachers was the elimination of salary steps. What can you tell us about that? You know, it's something that's a state statute. And, you know, you can look at all counties. This is something that has impacted every single county. Um, you know, they've tried to prioritize only beginning teachers, uh, which, you know, we believe that all teachers should be prioritized. Prioritized Veteran teachers should also um, have respect and dignity for the work that they do and the amount of dedication that they have committed to, to our, uh, you know, to our students. So, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done in public education because we have a a lot of lawmakers that are policy makers, but that are not educators. And so they don't understand what teachers are going through, what nurses are going through, um, what so many people in our community are struggling with. And, you know, we need, we, nobody has ever said, by the way, there's too many teachers uh, in politics. But they do say there's too many politicians that don't have the right heart that are doing the work. So we want to make sure that we put heart back into uh, taking care of our community. Carla, you're a special needs teacher. So I need to address a speech that you gave where you said that because you work with emotionally handicapped students, that you are qualified to deal with the dysfunctional legislature. Do you regret having said that? 
You know, I really regret that people took that out of context because I am a special education teacher that has dedicated my life 19 years to public education. And I would never want to harm or disrespect anyone in the exceptional student education community. Um, what it was actually intended to do was um, was certainly not to compare my students to the state legislature, but to compare and say how dysfunctional the state legislature actually has been for so many years, where they haven't been listening to people, where they've been spreading disinformation and misinformation, um, and really just about uh, how a teacher's heart needs to be there to really rectify all this, um, you know, sad and many times abusive behavior from grown ups that should be acting like adults. You've talked about affordability in the state, that people really can't afford to live in some of the major cities in the state of Florida. So what would you suggest can be done to alleviate what has become a major issue in the state? Jackie, that's actually the top issue. Everybody's talking about affordability. People are being outpriced. They're moving out of their communities. And it's unfortunate. You know, we see it in the classroom when our kids are telling us, I'm going to have to transfer to another classroom because my parents are getting evicted or they, we can't afford to live here anymore. And it's happening to teachers, too. We've been fighting for this for a long time, making sure that teachers have access to affordable um, workforce housing so that they can stay in their communities. So we know that something called the Sadowski Trust Fund has been rated for so many years. It's a trust fund that works was created for that, for housing, making sure that there was, um, you know, affordability in housing, workforce housing. But for so many years, it's been used for pet projects, for other things. They've cut those the funding in half. And we know that that was a solution that was implemented 15 years ago. But because it's been misused, uh, there's been misappropriations of its funds, it's really impacted so many communities. And so if we really want to get uh, to it and talk to folks and make sure that people have access to this affordability that everybody needs, um, we have to get back to it. We also have to drop insurance costs. You know, uh, the hurricane just passed. It created a lot of devastation. We know that this is going to have a domino effect. Our insurance is going to increase. But we have not had a governor or a state legislature that have wanted to make sure that they attack and, you know, not attack, but really dealt with it head on. Uh, when Charlie was governor, he reduced the insurance cost by 10%. We can do it. We just haven't had anybody that's willing to fight for the people. A woman's right to choose is an issue that will become a major issue in this election. Governor DeSantis put a 15-month abortion ban, as you know. If you were to become lieutenant governor, what would you try to do to change that? Well, Governor uh, DeSantis actually wants to ban all abortion. Um, he doesn't have exception for rape or incest or human trafficking. Um, and so we know that this is wrong. We know that women are complete humans. We shouldn't be treated as second-class citizens or second-class humans. Um, we should be able to have the freedom and liberty to make decisions about our bodies in the intimacy of our families. Um, and so what's happening here is that we know that we have to fight for women. And what we're going to do, and he's promised this already. Charlie has promised that on day one, he's going to make sure that we have rights by making sure that we have access to the health care that we need. We believe that Roe versus Wade should be the floor. That's what we've had uh, for many years. That is what we need to have. We can't have these restrictions where women are not treated with dignity and respect. We know that you were born and raised here in South Florida. You're from Honduran descent. And many Cuban Americans from South Florida took offense at a tweet by you when Fidel Castro died, saying, quote, a political figure has died. Most in Miami rejoice, many in Cuba mourn. Some say this was insensitive. It was an insensitive comment where you didn't condemn Castro. Do you regret that tweet? It, it's everything is so politicized. And I know you have to ask that question. But here's the thing, Jackie. I was born and raised in Hialeah. All my neighbors have been Cuban. Um, you know, I am a person that believes in human rights, um, you know, that has cared about the fights that my Cuban neighbors have had. I was actually on the street with pots and pans celebrating with my neighbors. Um, so that has been taken out of context as well. What that tweet does say, and you know, and you can obviously you read it, it shows the 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 it contrasts what an open society can do, what we can do in the United States, where we can celebrate, where we can be out with pots and pans, and where a closed society like Cuba cannot. They had to mourn. They had to, you know, pretend they were sad, even though we know that some people were really happy that this had happened. Um, and again, I believe it was taken out of context. I think that people 
say these things and try to put words in my mouth to try to make me something that I'm not. But, well, but, but that was the tweet. That's, idea. Idea. That's and, how you put the, the way, tweet out the way, there. Wait. And by the you way, put the tweet husband, out there, that, and you didn't condemn Castro. If you were to do that again, would you condemn Castro? Oh, we've always been against Castro. Uh, you know, I, I may not have written it, but it doesn't mean that I don't believe in it. That's why I was rejoicing. That's why I was celebrating in the street uh, with my neighbors, because we know that that's wrong. And, and here's what I wanted to add to that. I am married to a Latvian uh, person who fled the Soviet Union. He came to this country when he was 17 years old. I know it from that perspective as well, what it is to live in communism, what it is to be a refugee, and what it is to live in this country that has these freedoms and that embraces refugees and makes sure that people have access to the American dream. The election is less than a month away. We wish you good luck, Carla. Thank you, Jackie. Pleasure being here.